What's up agents, Wolfie, I welcome to another Division 2 video. In today's video, I'm going to give you a full breakdown on the expertise system, how it works, what's the most efficient way to level it up, and any kind of tip and trick that I can add in there for you guys. I did make a video in the PTS, but I think it's definitely needed since I've learned quite a lot since then to update the video and make a fresh one. So hopefully you guys do enjoy it. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. So let's take a look first and foremost at the expertise table at the recalibration station in the base of operations in Washington, DC. You guys come over here, you will go into it and you can see this optimization recalibration and the recalibration library. The one on the left is the expertise system. This is the one we are gonna discuss. So once you go into it, you are met with quite a few things that might confuse you. So I'm gonna try my best to explain this slow and straight to the point without uh, you know, talking too much about each thing because I could probably talk about it for a couple of hours. But we're gonna go through how it works, uh, all the different elements, uh, probably the fastest way to level up and the most efficient way to do it because that's also very important. You don't wanna be wasting all your resources or your time. So we have got different categories. As you guys can see, weapons, named and exotic gear, skills, brands, and gear sets. It's also important to mention that we have got specializations right here as well with all the different specializations. So each of these categories, you guys can see it says proficient with. With the assault rifle, i am currently got two assault rifles that I am proficient with. The whole point of all of this is to increase the proficiency ranks of each item until you become proficient with it. So for example, with assault rifles, I don't use the ACR, so my rank is zero. Then if you scroll down, uh, I've got right here, the Kingbreaker, which is a named assault rifle. Currently my rank is seven. So I've been playing with this gun. I'll explain to you exactly how we can get proficiency ranks up very soon. But you can see I've got proficiency rank seven. So there are many ways that you can actually increase your proficiency rank in this game. The main ways are gonna be using the item in the field and getting kill XP with them, donating matching items or donating materials. So that will increase your proficiency rank. So it is important to remember that with all of these, named items and exotics are separate. So for example, when we have a look at assault rifles, everything is there, we've got the Kingbreaker, we have got the Glory Days, we've got, all, which is a named assault rifle, the Burnout, and the normal ones, then the exotics like the Chameleon and the Capacitor. When we take a look right here, and then it, we go down into named and exotic gear, normally there's some named items like the Golan brand set. So if we go to the Golan brand set, I'm currently expertise, uh, proficiency ranked fully. But when we actually go into backpacks, as you guys can see, we have got a Golan backpack. So I'm proficient in Golan, but this named Anarchist Cookbook Golan backpack, I have got zero. So I've got fully maxed out, uh, but this one is zero. So named items and exotics are separate to the normal sets, for example. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to level it up, you're gonna still have to do these. So to get max proficiency rank, you need to reach level 10. As you can see, it is indicated right there. So like I said before, use the item in the field, donate matching items and or donate material. So if you have more Anarchist Cookbook, for example, or in the other section, any Golan pieces, donate them and it's a very efficient way of doing it. I'll explain what the most efficient way is very soon. Donating materials is quite expensive, but it is a quick way of actually doing it. So with all these subsections of different categories, you can see we've got Murakami and the Murakami, I don't have any pieces on me. I'm proficiency rank zero, but there is a named Murakami knee pad just to further explain this to you. So we've got a named and exotic gear, and then we go into the knee pads and my Emperor's Guard is, is level four because obviously I normally use Emperor's Guard, but not the normal one. This is the same with exotics. All the exotics gear will be here, but the exotic weapons will be populated in each category over there. Then we scroll down, we've got, just got the normal skills. It's quite simple, brand sets. I'm sure you guys understand exactly what I mean. If you don't, go in the comment section, I will explain. So the whole point of this is to increase your proficiency ranks. So you need to rank them up. Now, when I said you get uh, by getting uh, kill XP, the best way to actually rank up your proficiency rank is to put on, for example, if you want to rank up Badger Tough, the best way to do it is to actually put on six pieces of Badger Tough and then go into the countdown game mode and actually just farm with your with the, with the other seven players. 
Even if you're not getting kills, it counts towards your kill XP. You can level up Badger Tough from 0 to 10 in between 2 and 3 runs depending on how many kills your team gets. Normally it's almost the same because of the amount of enemies, but it could differ. So that's probably the best way to do it. You can go into some end game missions and use a jammer pulse and jam um, some of the decoys, I think, in one of the, the manhunt missions and then just kill yourself and rinse and repeat. There are different tricks. I'm sure a lot of you guys will put in the comments section down below. Um, and that's going to be probably the easiest way and most efficient way to increase your proficiency ranks. Now, why do you want to increase your proficiency ranks? The main reason to do that is so that you become proficient in as many items as you possibly can. So as you can see here, this is the section that tells me how many items I'm proficient in. I'm proficient in 14 out of 344 items. So why do you want to increase that? The whole point of increasing this is we want to make sure we are efficient in as many items as possible. Why? Because the more items we're proficient in, the higher our expertise level becomes. So my expertise level is now level four. And the reason why I want to do that is because if you guys come over here and then you become proficient, like for example, on my Eagle Bearer, I am proficient. I can increase the grade with this amount of materials by 1% or by 1, which will equal to 1% weapon damage. Now, I could only do this four times. So that's why we want to get more proficient items. Then our expertise level goes up. So then I could have potentially 20% weapon damage, for example, if we had a, uh, expertise level 20. So I can only do level 4, which means 4% percent weapon damage same thing with gear with arm uh, that's going to be one percent armor and then with skills healing status effect depending on what kind of skill it is so that is the whole point of the expertise system now like i mentioned earlier what's the most efficient way because I, you guys are probably wanting here comes the tips and tricks of what i i have actually learned so with proficiency ranks there are multiple ways of doing it so i think if you don't have lots of shade tech levels uh, to create new characters. So the main thing you want to have a look at is how many shade tech levels do you have? If you've got over 1,000, 1,500, it is probably the, be the best way to use the donation materials. So you can either donate matching items, donate materials, or get kill XP. If you have got a lot of shade tech levels, over one one and a half thousand, something like that, then what I would recommend doing is do a Warlords of New York run. You can start off from level four, from level 30, work your way up uh, to actual level 40, and then you unlock your shade tech watch. Then your shade tech watch will give you um, all the corresponding shade tech levels from your main agent. So you'll get them all again to refresh. Just make sure you buy the crafting, uh, the actual blueprint from this woman over here. Once you've gotten it, then you can share them. So if I create a new agent, I will get all of, well, it, it's not really all of them, but you'll get a huge amount of shade tech levels. Why is that important? And why is that one of the best ways of doing it? So I have changed to my second character, just to showcase exactly what I mean by the, the actual shade tech watch levels. So once you have a lot of Shade Tech watch levels, you're greeted by the screen here. So I've got about 30 because I have been using quite a lot of them. So you have an option to decide what you want to obtain. So currently for proficiency ranks, we need to decide what's going to be the best way to do it. So I can tell you guys what is probably the most cost effective or efficient way of doing it and what's just the easiest and fastest way of doing it. So if you've got lots of Shade Tech levels, what you want to actually do is use it on credits. Now there's a reason for that. So when we actually go into, uh, when we when we look at the expertise system, for example, and if you go into this vest, for example, and I want to donate materials, you will be greeted by this right here. So this is another way you can increase the proficiency rank, like I mentioned before. Just playing, getting weapon kills, donating materials, or you can also donate a matching item. So with the material cost, you need to try and decide what's going to be the most cost effective. With this system, what I have found, and obviously this is dependent on you, you guys might find something that's better than this. But for me, printer filament is going to be the much easiest way and the cheapest way of doing it. So you only require 30 printer filament to give you a increase into the actual level. And it's going to be 8,800 when you actually increase it. So what I can do is show you guys now. So if, no matter which one you select, it's going to give you the same amount. So bang it's going to be 8800 every single time so when you donate a corresponding item instead so if you go over here you will you can actually donate junk so if i had an armadillo vest it will be it will be signals below like i showed you earlier and then you can just push x or whatever it is on console and donate that corresponding item just 
just be careful not to donate your actual gear pieces that you want to keep for builds. Then it will give you the same amount as one. So that's what we need to establish. So one set of these, anything you want to choose, um, will actually give you 8,800, same as do donating an item. So just to summarize, one upgrade using any of these materials and printed film is going to be the best and cheapest. I'll explain why shortly. One upgrade will give you 8,800 towards your proficiency rank. This goes up every single time by that amount. So that's for donating. As I mentioned earlier, I will showcase exactly that it's going to be the same when you donate a corresponding item. I've just bought a Walker and Harris piece. So as you guys can see, my proficiency rank is actually 19,000. 508 so if i donate this item right here bang that has gone up to 28,308. that was a perfect increase of 8,800. so now that we know that donating one piece or donating one set of actual uh, resources does the same increment increase that helps us to determine what's going to be the most efficient way of leveling up so with your shade tech levels now some people have got over 30,000 shade tech levels so you can either do this or the other way so this is going to be the fastest way it's just going to be to use your shade tech levels to get the three shade tech levels will give you 30 printer filament which will increase to one a buff of the proficiency rank which will be 8,800 so three shade tech watch levels for one increase, which is 8,800. Now, this is not gonna be the most efficient way, but this is gonna be very quick to do it by just standing right here. So the most efficient way I've found, I'm sure you guys might correct me or give me some more advice in the comments. I'm still trying to learn this. Um, the most efficient way is gonna be getting credits. So with three shade tech levels, we get one increase of the proficiency ranks. With three shade tech levels of credits, we get 30,000 credits. Now, when we, when we have a look at that, now, this is what a lot of people have been telling me that you can do. So instead of utilizing your three shade tech levels for printer filament, you could actually just utilize your credits and buy a gear mod. For example, an improved sticky payload. So when you buy this item, it you buy it and then you deconstruct it. So just keep this in mind, guys. It is currently costing 4,519. So when we actually go into the modification itself right here, and I deconstruct it, it should give me six printer filament, bang, right over here. So six printer filament to get up to 30, we're gonna need five. Therefore, we're gonna be spending about 22 and a half thousand, around about there, it's not perfect, it's in my head, around about 22,500 credits to actually upgrade at once. When we have a look and go to individual pieces, like for example, that Walker and Harris chess piece that I just bought, this only costs 6,200, and that will be the same as buying five modifications, the same cost. So we're gonna be only spending 6,221 credits, as opposed to spending 22,000, just over 22,000 to get one increase. So in short, I think the most efficient way to do this is, is to know that the vendors reset every week. Every vendor reset, which is today on Tuesdays, Go and have a look at the vendors and see what what items they have that you haven't been proficient in and then buy them from using your Shade Tech Watch on credits. Use your Shade Tech Watch on credits, go to the vendors, see the corresponding items and then donate the items. That's going to be the most efficient way. Now, when you run out of items in the vendors, then the best way is actually going to be still use your Shade Tech Watch on, on credits, but then buy gear mods and then deconstruct them for printer filament. Why? Because, like I mentioned earlier, you have to use three Shade Tech Watch levels per one proficiency increase uh, when you just get it on printer filament from the Shade Tech Watch. Otherwise, you could get three Shade Tech Watch levels on credits and then be able to buy six of them, which will give you more printer filament than the actual five. That'll give you 36 printer filament, so you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck. So it's a bit more efficient. Like I said, it's not the biggest difference, but it's up to you how you want to do it. If you're completely broke, if you don't have any Shade Tech watch levels, if you don't have any credits on your agent, the best way to do it is to go to the countdown game mode and put many of as many pieces of as many pieces as you possibly can. The more pieces you have on your gear, the quicker proficiency ranks will go up. Your teammates will be increasing it for you. So for example, the Kingbreaker is a named item, and then you put two Kingbreakers on, and then it'll increase it faster, if you guys know what I mean. Another way you can do it is you go to the actual countdown game mode uh, as well. And I think what I started doing, which is wrong, is I would set the targeted loot for the countdown to 
gear mods and then just deconstruct the gear mods for printer filament. You can do that, but what I found the best way to do it is going to be for uh, whatever corresponding item you're actually leveling up. So if I've got six piece Golan gear, I will put the targeted loot to Golan gear. So every Golan gear I piece, I donate it. You will level up so fast on your proficiency ranks this way guys and the more items become proficient the higher your expertise therefore the higher the grade and the strength of the item so i think that's going to be the best way to do it then but it's also important to take note that things like exotics you're not going to find exotics in targeted loot you might find one every couple of days or every couple of hours if you're lucky so therefore it might be a bit better to actually put it on gear mods and then deconstruct the gear mods for printer filament for the exotics because Buying exotics as well is quite tricky. There are some new, there are some named items in the vendors, and the named items are quite common in the countdown. So you can definitely go for, like for example, the Kingbreaker, put on target to loot assault rifles, and then you will actually be able to go through the countdown game mode and uh, go for that, and then get the actual named items and then you will donate them, and it is quite efficient that way. Just remember that named items and exotics are separate. Then I think the, the, the most important thing to, to now discuss is also is which ones do you focus on making proficient first? What I would do is spend all your Shaytech watch levels, your money or, or your time into actually expertising the ones that you use the least. So what I would do, guys, is simple. I would level up your exotics you, you use the least uh, immediately. That's what I would do first. So like I don't use tardigrade ever, I would level up my tardigrade because I'm not going to find lots of tardigrades to, to actually donate the corresponding item and it's going to be difficult. So use all of your printer filament or whatever your credits, whatever you want to use or donate pieces that you have. You might have extra ones on this on the pieces you, do, you use the least. So then the things like brand sets and gear sets, you should be doing last. Why? Because like I said, you could put six pieces of them. You can only put one exotic on, even weapons. With weapons, you can only put one at a time. So it's going to take forever. So like, for example, uh, the Mantis will take forever. You're going to be using it on your character, just having it on. So you don't have to actually use the gun. For example, if it's your secondary, even your pistol will gain as long as it's on your character at the time, it, as on your loadout. So the Mantis, go and level it up first if you're not going to be using it or use all your materials on that one first and then once you've done all the difficult ones, then it's easy to get the gear sets and the brand sets and a bit easier with the named items. So hopefully you do understand what I mean by that. Then also make sure you guys create other characters. If you have over a thousand watch level, like I mentioned earlier, make lots of other characters, level up to level 40. Therefore, you get lots of spare Shade Tech levels just to overall increase it more. But I guess expertise is just more for the fun. You guys must just have fun. It's just a, pr a constant progression while you play the game. But I think it's also important to know some of the tips or tips and tricks. Something else I wanted to add as well is depending on how far you want to go into the expertise system, you're going to need exotic components eventually. So make sure you guys save your exotic components. So don't just donate all your spare exotics to increase your proficiency ranks. You can if you want to, just be wary that you may need some more exotic components down the road. Also, when you are actually donating your resources towards proficiency ranks, don't use the donate all button. It has been confirmed that the math is wrong in the game and you will lose resources. So just do it individually and then you guys will be no will, will have no problem until the devs have confirmed they have fixed it. So hopefully this, this video did help you out, guys. Please make sure to leave a comment down below. If it did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace out, agents.